Grown up time, bitches. Are you ready to move out? Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Philip. And we teach you what you need to know about your personal finances using words you can understand without boring you to death. Because adulting shouldn't suck. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and actually hit it. You know, like subscribe, don't just watch yeah. and then go away. YouTube likes it when you subscribe, so we like it too. But uh, yeah, so make sure you do that. And then in the comments below, let us know if you have any questions about moving out. In this video, we're gonna teach you four things you should consider before you actually move out. Oh yeah. First thing you're gonna to have to do, is you're gonna to have to get real with yourself. Set realistic expectations. Everybody's gonna have a different idea of what their first place is gonna be like when they move out. For example, I thought my first place was gonna be amazing. It was gonna be so nice and pretty. I was gonna have all this cool stuff. Everybody was gonna to wanna to come and hang out with me and hang out at my house. And I was just gonna be like, woo, yeah, my first place. Now, everybody else might have like, you know, different ideas of what their first place is gonna be like. They're probably not gonna be as good of ideas as what mine was, but you know, um, you just gotta be realistic with yourself. Mm -hmm. In reality, my first place had zero furniture. All I had was a mattress from my mom's house, and that was it. <laughs> I'm a failure. <laughs> my dreams have come true. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, anyways, don't mind him. He's dramatic. <laughs> So anyways, uh, yeah, set realistic expectations when you're first moving out and you're not going to be disappointed or think you're a failure. Mm. When you're first moving out, it's freaking expensive mm -hmm. and it's okay if your first place you move into isn't, you know, the perfect ideal place to move into because you're going to have all kinds of new bills you probably never paid for, right? Rent and amenities and electricity and all that other crap adds up and it's a lot of money. But, you know, a lot of people will see that first apartment and maybe, I don't know, it's 1200 bucks or 1500 bucks or whatever. And they're like, oh my gosh, it has everything I want. <laughs> well, uh, okay, that's great. But if you have to work three jobs just to afford it, you ain't going to have any time left over to actually go enjoy those amenities. True. So you're better off if you get like that $800 apartment and you can actually afford to live there, you know, maybe save up and buy a couch. And then as you make more money and you're a little more financially stable, then you upgrade to a nicer living place. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to figure out if you can afford to move out by yourself or if you're gonna to need to get a roommate or two or three. To do this, you're gonna to wanna to do some research to find out what the cost of living is gonna be in the area where you're gonna live. So get on Google, get on Facebook Marketplace, go to Craigslist, what have you, look up you know, the apartments or rooms that you're wanting to rent out. You know, they're gonna tell you how much they're gonna be, 800 bucks, 900 bucks, 1,000 bucks, you know, one bedroom, two bedroom, whatever. But you're gonna to have to be able to do this to see if you can afford it. The rule of thumb is you're gonna to wanna to make three times the amount of rent each month. So if rent's $1,000 a month, you're gonna to wanna to make at least $3,000 a month to be able to get accepted into that apartment. If you're gonna move in with a roommate or roommates, make sure you set boundaries at the very beginning. I mean, everybody has that like, perfect friend in mind you think is going to be like the best person to live with but have you ever actually lived with them do you know what they're like if you live with them are they clean are they nasty are they dirty you know do they leave laundry everywhere do they use your crap do they eat your food oh right these are all like legit things that can totally ruin friendships and you don't really think about that you're just like oh yeah i want to live with my best friend yeah you know but worse than ruining friendships is if they decide to bail out, you know, and just dip out and leave. It can ruin your credit and your rental history if they just leave you high and dry. Finding a good roommate could be harder than finding a place to live. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Next up, coming in at number three, credit. Yep, credit. Anywhere that you're going to move, whether it's an apartment, a condo, a house, you know, anywhere other Hardboard than your box. parents' house or a cardboard box, yeah. they're gonna check your credit to let you move in. No good credit, no keys for you. Nobody wants to let you live in their place if you're not actually gonna pay your rent, right? You're a bum if you don't do that, and I wouldn't rent to you either. However, if you have credit history, it shows that you're actually a reliable person and you make payments on time, right? It shows a history of you making payments, yeah. and that's really important to landlords. But if you don't have a credit history, 
and you're still living at home, you can still start right now, which is one of the easiest ways to do it. Get a credit card. Don't use it like a debit card. Just put a small reoccurring charge on it every single month, something like Netflix or Hulu or Spotify or whatever, and then set it up for automatic payments, and that way it gets paid off every single month, and you can't forget, and then, oops, have a late payment. Mm -hmm. But after about four to six months of that, you'll establish a credit history, and then, you know, landlords are gonna be more likely to trust you that you can actually pay bills, even if it is something small like, you know, Netflix. If you don't have any credit, or if you had bad credit, you can still move out, but you're most likely going to need a co-signer. A co-signer is going to be somebody that accepts responsibility for your bills in the event that you don't pay them. But to be a co-signer, somebody has to have good credit, and they have to make enough money to pay their bills and your bills in the event that you don't pay them. So uh, if you don't pay your bills, that's going to reflect poorly on your co-signer as well. Typically, you're going to need a co-signer for the first six months of, of being out on your own. Six to 12 months is, is pretty normal. Mm -hmm. And then that co-signer can be asked to be removed after you've established yourself as a responsible adult. And if you stiff that person that co-signs you, they're going to want to kill you because now they've got to pay your bills on top of their bills. And that's going to be a lot of drama you just don't want. So pay your own bills. They're also going to like know where you live and stuff. Yeah. Just so you know. Anyways, if you'd like to find out more about building credit, check out our credit building playlist and the link is going to be in the description below. Lastly, you're going to have to know how to budget. If you've been following us for a while or seen any of our videos, you know that we talk about budgeting a lot. And that's because if you don't know how to budget, it is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make your life way harder than it needs to be and it's probably going to suck until you figure it out because yeah. you're going to be real broke. And being an adult, is not cheap. It's really expensive, like we said earlier, because you gotta pay for all kinds of stuff you've never had to pay for before, like rent and utilities, and maybe a car payment, and car insurance, and a phone bill. And on top of all that other stuff, you still gotta buy food. It's so funny. Everybody always like gets their money, and then they pay all their bills, and then whatever's left over, that's what they get to live off of for food. Speaking from experience, eating Top Ramen once a day, every day, it gets real old real fast. Yeah, not, not good. And you want to make sure you also have a savings account and an emergency fund. Using a credit card to pay off bills that you didn't budget for is just a way to fast track you back to your parents' house. Hashtag failure. Moving back in definitely sucks. I haven't had to do it, but a lot of my friends have. Can you imagine the look on your parents' face when you like walk back home and you're like, mama, Daddy, I failed to being a grown it up. Uh, can I, I can I sleep on your couch? I tried, but I sucked at life. Yeah, I would uh, I would absolutely sleep outside before I asked my mom to move back in. Couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh, I'd be couch surfing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Getting like two, yeah. three, four jobs. Yep. What Pride's too strong in this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of pride. Yeah. Don't forget to check out our other videos on moving out under our move out playlist, and make sure you download the twelve steps to moving out checklist that we have and the link is in the description below it's free it's super helpful and i mean it's free Duh. yeah use it Duh. it's gonna help you yeah if you like this video make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe like actually subscribe and the comments below let us know if you have any questions and make sure you share this video with your friends or potential roommates and don't move out and get kicked out nobody wants to be a failure